sustainable systems. Um, so members here have been working on these kinds of things for a really long time um, and do so from different angles. And that's one of the things that's really exciting about our membership and helps keep this place fresh and alive all of the time. So with that, um, again, I'm super happy to introduce and welcome Juanita uh, from Venture for Canada. Hi, Juanita. Hi. Thanks for having me, Tara. I'm so grateful to be here. Yeah, nice. That was a great intro song as well and great intro, Stefan. I really enjoyed that. Juanita, can you tell us a little bit about Venture for Canada um, and your role there? Yeah, so um, Venture for Canada is a six-year-old um, national organization and our mission is to foster the entrepreneurial mindset of and skills of young Canadians. We um, have a vision of a Canada where young people can really explore their entrepreneurial potential to build the most inclusive and prosperous place um, in the world. And we do that through um, program-based um, learning. So we have a fellowship program, which is our um, core primary program that runs um, in all provinces in Canada, uh, except for Quebec. And we have an internship program which is funded by the federal government where we provide small medium-sized businesses unfortunately not in ontario but in the atlantic provinces west and western provinces with wage subsidies so that they can hire interns for up to 16 weeks of work and um, we subsidize 75 percent of their wages that's amazing um I love the concept of the fellowship and the work that is done there. Can you tell us a little bit more about what, what a cohort looks like? Who, who's it for? Who do you prioritize? Um, and how do you help them develop those skill sets you were talking about? Yeah, absolutely. So our fellowship is a one year long program for recent graduates from any post-secondary. So um, university, college, and even uh, vocational post-secondary institutions. Um, in Canada, as well as uh, international students who have come to Canada to study and Canadians who have studied abroad. So we work with students um, or recent grads one to two years out of university and they go through 15 months of immersive um, training opportunities. So we have a wonderful training manager, Anna Smith, who's based out of St. John, John's, Newfoundland. And all of our training is around what we call entrepreneurial skills. So those are a combination of soft uh, human skills and um, hard skills um, so that they can thrive in the startup community. As they go through the training program, they also are connected to startups across Canada. We have over 160 startups as well as social enterprises who partner with Venture for Canada and they interview our fellows and end up hiring fellows full time. Um, Startups do pay us a fee to partner with us and there's ancillary benefits to the startups and social enterprises and community organizations that become a hiring partner. Those opportunities include coming to uh, training sessions as trainers. So having the chance to share your thought leadership in front of youth. Uh, also receive training from our training team related to onboarding, hiring and interviewing best practices. And we also um, do different events for our partner startups so that they can connect with one another and share um, any best practices around youth and working with youth. We consider youth um, within like our, our young Canadians are up to 29. Um, we don't really have an age range, but that's kind of the definition of youth and Canadians that we work with. It's, it's amazing. It's a great program. Um, I know that you guys worked really, really hard over the last six months to keep it open. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about what that pivot looked like. Yeah, so uh, of course, I think COVID has affected everybody in different ways. Um, we really are a community um, of alumni, fellows, and individuals, and also part of um, you know the reason why we we started um, working out of CSI about has it been two years now, maybe yeah, almost two, two years. Exactly. Um, is because we're at this inter at this really intersection of post-secondary uh, institutions, working with post-secondaries, working with government, and working with the startup ecosystem. And those often provide very different, have very different community needs and value very different things. And um, 
what CSI has allowed us to do is has allowed us to stay grounded in our social innovation practices and methods and um, to really lean into a community of folks who have expertise in social entrepreneurship and really kind of learn from all the members at CSI. Um, part of that was learning how to pivot really quickly with minimal resources. As we all have experienced, we were able to uh, pivot to a virtual environment and innovate our training, which we're actually now outsourcing to post-secondaries in Canada. So that happened in June and July, where we held four weeks of eight-hour training sessions online. So we had to create a self-directed learning program as well as a uh, what we call a synchronous um, learning program, meaning you come online at the same time and really provide recent grads and students the choice of um, taking their learning into their own hands while also making sure that we're building community. And that's really tough to do. I think everybody's experiencing Zoom burnout. Um, it was like at the beginning of COVID where we, you know, we were still cold outside and people were indoors um, for most of the day. So we really tried to be innovative, have different types of activities. We held something called the Envision Challenge, which I actually um, got as an idea from speaking with Gonzalo. So um, we have, um, to get into our program, applicants have to go through a very um, intense application process. And so right now what we're working is how do we make our application process more, di more inclusive, um, particularly given, you know, things like the digital divide, things like um, questions that you ask in an online environment that might not create like psychological safety when you're looking at admissions-based programming. Those are all questions that we're kind of pondering right with right now, but our typical admissions process is also an in-person admissions process. We host these big events called selection days where we do um, in-person challenges, learning about the SDGs, a social impact challenge, and one-on-one -on -one interviews with community members who are judges. So leaders from the startup and entrepreneurship community act as the judges who select our fellowship cohort. So really, um, you know, it's not us who selects, it's not Venture for Canada staff, but it's the entrepreneurial community in Canada that is selecting like this next cohort of entrepreneurial youth to work in the ecosystem. And we wanted to fill some of the knowledge gaps around sustainability and um, inclusion and impact. So we ended up doing a digital four day um, virtual sprint challenge where our fellows were able to design social impact and sustainability reports using for a hypothetical venture, using the SDGs and using the B Corp model and a combination of other um, impact measurement models. And that was a really interesting activity because it was the, it, we kind of held it in the last two weeks of training camp and the feedback came back that that was the one opportunity that allowed them to build friendships. And I think it's really tough to build friendships in virtual environments. And that's kind of something that we've, um, that was really encouraging to know that it can happen during, you know, with strangers at a time when there's like a lot of stress and anxiety and a lot of uncertainty and ended up creating like a little group of social innovators that are now, um, helping and focus grouping our social impact report and their startup social impact reports, which is really important. That's amazing. I think that, that those kinds of learnings right now, I hope that we'll have more opportunities to dig in to um, those kinds of intensives because it really is an opportunity to learn from one another um, around bringing community together in these kinds of productive ways. Um, great, okay, final question. What can we do to help you in your work at Venture for Canada? Is there something that, that you need from the CSI community? Uh, there is, I, I like to give, give and ask. So if there's anything I can give to the CSI community as well, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to, I can put my, my email on the chat, but right now we have multiple programs that we are running in a virtual environment. Um, if you know recent graduates and youth who are interested in building community, have um, a lot of ambition in trying to build a more sustainable, inclusive Canada, and want to um, work in the startup ecosystem and have the supports to do that, you can refer them to our fellowship applications. Um, applications are open until October 
29th, and these can be graduate students from PhD to master's degrees to undergraduate students to college and vocational college students. Um, we're also always looking for leaders in the community who want to volunteer their time at, as judges. So we'll, we will have a virtual selection event. And if you are interested in just connecting with the Venture for Canada community, that's a really great first step is to kind of see how our programs work. Uh, if you are a facilitator or a trainer or have training programs that you wanna share, we do have a facilitation budget. So our training program is pre-designed about a year out but we always have opportunities for um, people to come and speak to our fellows. So there's uh, volunteer opportunities and there's also paid for opportunities if you have interesting and innovative training that you um, provide. We also have something called our DI Town Hall. So if you're in the diversity, equity and inclusion and belonging space and are uh, interested and curious in connecting with folks, uh, young folks and their experiences, we always invite speakers. And the last kind of opportunity that I think we're, we would be love to connect with folks about is related to focus grouping. If there's, you have a business or an idea and are looking for a community to give input, those are great engagement opportunities for our fellows. So to, they like coming together, they like uh, having challenges in front of them and they like solving problems. So that's always something that we can engage our community on to support the CSI community. So lots of opportunities. I can drop my email on um, the chat. And if there's anything that comes up, and even if you're unsure, or if you need something from us, please um, feel free to, to ask. That's great, Juanita. I think that was five very tangible opportunities and ways to get connected to Venture for Canada. Um, so thanks so much for being here today. I'm popping the website in the chat as well. That you'd like to get in touch with Juanita, go ahead and give her, give her a shout. She's uh, one of the best. So, all right. That's thanks.